Hey there, if you don't know me, my name is Maria and I like to talk about technology on the internet. And today I'm going to talk about something that I'm very passionate about, which is mechanical keyboards, as you can see them flashing behind me. So have you ever really thought about your primary mechanism of interacting with your computer? Well, that's your keyboard. And while some people are okay with using the keyboards that come on their laptops or that their companies provide them with, I'm going to try to explain to you why you should put more thought into the keyboards that you're using and how you can figure out which keyboard is right for you. So if you're a student or a software engineer like I am, then you probably spend around a thousand hours typing on your keyboard every single year. So some of the questions I want you to ask yourself about your current keyboard is, how does it feel to type on it? Do you have to move your fingers a lot to get to the keys that you use the most? How does it feel to actually press down on those keys? Do you like how it feels or is it annoying? And what about the sound? Do you enjoy the sound? Is it too quiet or is it too loud? And these are some of the things that we're going to cover when we're talking about mechanical keyboards and how you can make the perfect mechanical keyboard for you. So let's start off with the question, what is a mechanical keyboard? Well, it's just a keyboard that uses switches for each key in it. Most of the typical inexpensive keyboards just have switches that have like these rubber dome things under them. And they're not really that fun to type on in my opinion. Essentially mechanical keyboards provide a range of tactility that those rubber dome keyboards don't provide. And just so you know, buying a mechanical keyboard isn't like good economics or anything. It's not like they're gonna last longer maybe than other keyboards. Possibly they could, but I'm sure like if you found a keyboard out I don't know, at some Best Buy or something, it would still last for a long time. So why would you want to buy a mechanical keyboard? Well, it's going to be customized to you. So the, the layout, the keycaps, the switches, everything is perfect for you and who you are because keyboards, like I said, are something that we use all the time and making it a fun experience is a, kind of what it's all about. So the first thing I want to talk about with mechanical keyboards was the switches. So switches can be categorized by their physical shape and how they're mounted onto your keyboard, like the base of your keyboard. So like if you look over here, how they're mounted inside. So I actually have one that you can take outside, like you can switch out these ones. They're called hot swappable switches. So you can literally take them out, pull them out, and you can switch them with other types. But some of them are fully mounted inside and you can't take them out. The three categories for the physical type of switches are called linear, clicky, and tactile. The most common type of switch is the Cherry MX. And before they used to actually have a patent that only allowed them to use their switches with their specific mountings. But now that their patent has expired, a lot of other companies have started to create more cheaper versions of the Cherry style switches. And one of them that I like is actually the Chinese brand Kale. They actually make really good switches. They also categorize switches the same as Cherry, where they use like blue, green, red to categorize what type of switch they are. Like are they linear, tactile, whatever, how much actuation force do they have? And we'll get into this soon. So linear switches are basically when you just press down on the switch and it just goes all the way down. Like there's no resistance. And then you hit the bottom and it just bottoms out. A tactile switch is kind of similar, but there's actually a force you have to have when you press down on it initially, and then it's easier to press down and then it also bottoms out. So that's why they're called tactile because at the beginning you'll know that you've pressed it. You've pressed down on it because they have that force that you have to overcome. A clicky switch actually is similar to the tactile. It does have like the actuation force at the beginning, but it makes a clicking sound. <laughs> so these are all kind of similar-ish, but personally I prefer the tactile switches because I want to know when I'm pressing down on a key and I don't want to make mistakes when I'm coding. So like I've mentioned before, each switch has its own weight or the actuation force to actually press down on it. And those forces are measured in centinewton or CN, or similarly, they're measured in GF, which is like this, almost an equivalent. One CN equals 1.02 GF, same thing basically. So you can see the different ranges of them. And I generally tend to go for the higher range or like mid range of actuation force because again, I like to make sure that I know what keys I'm pressing when I'm pressing on my keyboard. But generally, if you're looking for a keyboard for specifically something like gaming, then you might go for linear switches 
because they're just easier to press down on and it will make you a better gamer I guess because it's faster and also what's good is that sometimes online you can order just one specific key switch or like a set of a few different ones so you can test them out instead of having to buy an entire package for your entire keyboard and spending a lot of money and maybe not enjoying that type of switch so you can experiment and test things out and it's also good because you might not be able to test those things out because they might not be offered at your nearby like technology store because they probably just carry the range of cherry switches which are most common but if you want to try out something new then you can probably order a single switch online, have it come to your house, test it out, and then decide if you want to make the jump and make the whole purchase for your keyboard. Now the second thing that I want to go into is actually keyboard layouts and sizes. So first of all, you can buy different sized keyboards because you might want to have keys that you're used to. Maybe you want to have a 100% sized keyboard with all the numpad and everything and all the, the row at the top to go to your home and have all the function keys. But some people want smaller, more specific keyboards or ones where you can double up on some switches. Like this is specifically a 65% where it does still have the arrows at the side and it has like all the numbers and every, uh, all the letters, but it doesn't have the function panel at the top or the extra stuff at the sides. So the type of size that most people would go with is called TKL, which stands for 10 keyless. So you're probably just not going to have like the numpad at the side, but you'll still have all the rest of the functionality of the keyboards that you're used to. Also, if you're interested in keyboards, then I would look at ergonomic keyboards as well, which I have actually purchased on my second keyboard, which is this ErgoDox, and it's split in half. Okay, the other half is like this, and then it's really good because when you're typing on it, you can spread out your chest and your shoulders, and that's really good because you're not all crunched together like regularly you would be with a normal keyboard. What I really like about this keyboard in particular is that I can program it to be whichever way I want. So I could have any layout. And that's what I mean why I really like different layouts. Because I found that the regular QWERTY layout that I've had, which is like when you would have QWERTY up here at the top of your keyboard, those ones mainly require you to move your hands around a lot. And they're not very comfortable actually. So if you're interested in the field of human computer interaction, you might want to look more into keyboard layouts. Basically the different layouts there are, like there's a whole bunch. There's also Warack, which is more optimized and fast. But the one that I've chosen to work with most recently is called Workman. So it's actually optimized for like your hands are usually like in within one row, right? They start off like over here. And it's optimized so that most of the letters you're going to be pressing are within the home row and you don't have to move very far with your fingers to actually reach most of your other used keys. And what I really like about this keyboard in particular is that you can program it. Well, you can do that with mine as well, like my other one, but a lot of keyboards don't have that functionality so that's why I really love programmable keyboards because then you can go on the online software and then choose like whatever key you want. Like, okay, I want this one to be like face, this one to be delete. This one to increase my music, decrease my music. You can assign macros as well to your switches. Like instead of doing like option shift or something, then you can just be like, okay, I'll click this one key and it'll do those things for me. So that's really cool and fun. And just makes you, your keyboard so personalized to you, I think. And you can change it around whenever you want. And I've done that a lot with this keyboard. I think it's super fun, but it's also really hard because you have to relearn how to type if you switch your keyboard layout because I've been using QWERTY my whole life. So now Workman is a new switch. Switch, And then uh, you'll see another video from me trying to learn how to use this keyboard because it's very interesting to learn. <laughs> also, what I didn't mention that makes this keyboard special is that it's ortholinear, which means that all of the keys are actually lined up straight and not staggered like we would see on a normal keyboard because those were following how typewriters worked because it would be good when you were using a typewriter but on keyboards it's good when they're ortholinear also with my hands especially like so I don't get carpal tunnel hopefully I really enjoy it but it was something to get used to also if you're interested in figuring out which layout might be right for you then I'd recommend trying out a software such as the one I'll link below which is called Loggerman which I want to really try out it will actually track which keys you're pressing over maybe the span of a week or more. And then you can see a heat map that they'll produce, which will show you which keys you actually use most. And then you can compare it to different layouts that you can find online and see which ones you might want to try switching to. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about when it comes to mechanical keyboards is the keycaps. And there's a wide variety of keycaps. So what I mean by keycaps is the actual like 
cover of the Switch. Those can be really, really cool. And you can find such beautiful designs online. Keycaps are great because they make your keyboard also more unique to you and your aesthetic. Well, personally, I like the more minimal keyboard, both a bunch of lights and glowing and stuff. It's fun for me. Since you can just pull out your keycaps easily, then you can customize like a specific one. You don't have to buy a whole set. You can just make like a few of them colorful or you can paint your own keycaps and that would be really cool too. But also what you should know is that you should be careful about which keycaps you buy because you don't want to buy the cheap ones that will rub away. Usually those are the ones that are like laser cut onto the actual plastic of your keycap. But there's also double shot ones, which are the ones I tend to buy. That means when you take two different colors of plastic and put them on top of another, it's like the contrasting colors will create the letters or numbers that you see on your keycap. And there's also dye sublimation or dye sub, as it's commonly called, which is where the markings are dyed into the plastic. So it's kind of like a tattoo for keycaps, which I think is cool. Yeah, you can also for the keycaps, you can choose if you want them to be more angled down or angled up. It depends on what you want, but I think mine are fine with no angle. So it depends on you, I guess. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned a lot about mechanical keyboards. And maybe you're excited to get into this community of crazy mechanical keyboard enthusiasts or dive in deeper to it because it's a really fun to be able to customize the way that you work because like I said, we use keyboards so much and just using the one on my laptop is not that fun. Plus the CPU just goes crazy and like it's super, it overheats and I'm like burning my fingers when I try typing. So that's why I like a mechanical keyboard because it's separate and it just increases my workflow because I can program my keyboards so I can use different macros for the things that I do a lot of. Then I can also make me type faster and it's also, I really like the sound of typing and the feeling of it. So it just makes my overall day more enjoyable when I'm using something that I have built myself and that I really love. And I hope that you can find that too with your own keyboard that you've built. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please smash that like button, subscribe. Tell me what your favorite key switches are, keyboards, everything about that because I'd be really curious. And see you next time. Bye.